Good morning, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for April 23rd to order. The time is now 9.03 a.m. The first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Everyone, please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, for anyone who is interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. Uh, anyone wishing to address the board can do so by coming up to the microphone. Please clearly state your name and address. And uh, I don't see the sign-in sheet out, so when you come up, we'll make sure you <laughs> sign in. Uh, at this time, I'll open the floor to public comments. Um, we only have one member of the audience. Don, do you have any comments? Okay, fantastic. We'll move into the items for discussion then. Hold it. Yes. Fred Walters couldn't be here, but he'd like us to bring him in on a phone call at your convenience whenever you want. Okay. I mean, can he join the Zoom? Uh, I don't know. He's, I think he's in Harrisburg. In the okay, that's fine. Do you want to? Do you want to call him? Yeah. Just call him, him, just call him and put him on speakerphone. Yeah, go ahead. Give him. Or are we, okay, I mean, if he's expecting us at nine fifteen, we can just call him back in ten minutes. Right. Yeah. Okay. 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 So the first item for discussion is the Marion Township Community Association Car Show. This is Saturday, May fourteenth, uh, two thousand twenty-two, from nine a.m. to three p.m. Uh, there's a need for volunteer fire police, which I will work on getting secured. Uh, the next thing that we need to do as supervisors is to decide what roads are closed, the traffic pattern, and parking. The board needs to make a motion on this uh, to close all or a portion of Main Street. Um, what I am suggesting is we close, and let me actually pull up a map here, and I'll show it to the two of you. I'm taking notes. So okay. It makes it a little bit easier to do the minutes. Dylan has a map, too. Yes. Yeah, 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 I didn't. I to repeat stuff. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. I'll do my best to type it up. So too. let me actually pull it up on the big screen. Here. What I'm suggesting, and I'll, I'll draw this up once we have the, the motion and stuff like that, is we close Main Street for through traffic from Canal and Main, potentially all the way down to Richland and Main. And I say potentially for a reason, and I'll get that in a second. All traffic for the car show would come uh, westbound on Main Street and either be directed into the car show or down, uh, which is sharp here, down sharp either into the playground or into the township parking lot for parking. Uh, the community association has also secured parking at St. John's uh, Reeds Lutheran as well and handicapped parking at Twilight Acres, which we'll have to handle by taking somebody up Mary Drive and over. Um, we close that off, we close any of the entrances to 422 with the exception of Twilight Acres. We want to close it after that. Uh, so that way they still have access to, to 422 for normal business during the morning and the afternoon. And then we close uh, the other church road and the alley there. Uh, that way, any traffic that is coming up sharp could conceivably be brought back over and down onto Main Street if we have somebody coming northbound. And any traffic leaving the car show would be brought down sharp. So and what road superpose opposed so church and? Well, um, I'll give you an explanation and okay. I'll go through it line by line. Yeah. Um, if we don't have enough, or I shouldn't say if we don't have enough, if we have the right volume of cars that are in the car show, if we stop parking cars before the intersection of Huntsinger and Maine, we actually would be able to take people out to 422 rather than forcing all traffic south. Um, so I don't know what our anticipated turnaround is, or turnout is, if we have anywhere near as much as we had the first year, we're we're going to have to park pretty much the whole way down to, to where Bob Nelson is. So I throw that out there as let's maybe entertain that thought as if we can do it, it would be preferred to get people back to 422 rather than taking them way out down and around. But if we can't, we just push all traffic southbound. So thoughts so far. 
Okay. So uh, when I make a motion in a couple of minutes, what I would be motioning is to close Main Street to through traffic from Canal and Main to Main Street and Richland Road. to close the uh, entrance from 422, the, the westernmost entrance from 422, which is a, like an unmarked alley road, church road, the road that Twilight Acres, that's technically an alley, the alley for Twilight Acres after their property, And Marion Drive. Is that pretty much the same as your plan, Don? Does that line up more or less with yours? Somewhat. Okay. Well, are there any differences you want to? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, of course, we want to close off anything coming up before 22. Mm -hmm. We want to make everybody come in uh, share as well. Share it. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You want to be, yeah, talking about the down here and then up Main Street. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's you and you and I are so far we're lined up. And then coming off, coming in uh near Marion Drive, mm -hmm. we will have three lanes of traffic. We will have two lanes of show cars and one uh, lane of coming in sharp road yep. that's the thing. Yep. And then we would like to have Rather than going all the way out to the end of the alley, yeah. there, that is a, from your that alley when it goes on to Main Street, yeah. it's got a nasty dip in it. Okay. I don't know what seven cars down there have well, to do is it. Is it a, a dip that we'd be able to put like millings or something in a gravel to it's, it's a gutter. It's a gutter? It's okay. a gutter between Main Street and that. Okay. So I want to cut it off one way, one way out. Okay. That church, the church road. So you wanna you wanna have to have somebody doing flood control. Pretty well, I'm track. pretty sure we're gonna have to because of how far down we go. Now, if it's a nice day, yes, we will have to go down. But if it's a rainy day and very few people do come, mm -hmm. I'll cut it right off the church road okay. and park the one down. But um, as I as you have said, uh, the, the one car show we had, we did go beyond church road. Yeah. And uh, we had cars coming in off of uh, 422. And we had people coming off of the, uh, the, the uh, highway there mm -hmm. and trying to come in Main Street from that end. Yeah. I'm going to cut it, I'm going to put the, the cut the road off right there, pitch the road. Okay. Because there's a lot of people coming That's in. Exactly the on that. Yeah. 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 I don't understand if they can't come in. Church Road. Yeah. So Church Road would be a one-way one way out. out. Okay, perfect. I was just about to suggest that if we're going to do that, we have it one way so that you can go out, right. but not in, and then we'll close Richland. down down at Main by Richland. So people can still come in and go down Richland or come up with Richland and go back to 422. Okay. And we have permission to park along the grass strip between the, uh, the northern alleyway Okay. So if you have some uh, people from um, the fire companies that are coming, I would like to have them out there because they have like, trucks with the red flashing lights and yep. they know how to drive traffic. Yep. But there is not anybody parking on the northern end of the bar and highway and try to yeah. come across the highway. Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't want people parking and trying to cross the highway. That's just too much of a hazard. Yeah. yeah. So I think with that parking from all the alleyway down to Twilight Acres, and, she, and we're going to probably put a vendor on the end of that one-way street, but not, I didn't want to take a whole lot of parking away from Twilight Acres. Are you, are you talking about this one here? Or? I mean, no, I think that's this. This I one? Think right there at Twilight Acres, okay. that's a one-way yeah. street. Yeah, I was saying we close, we barricade after Twilight Acres, so they can still get traffic in, but you could absolutely put vendors and stuff up there. I was, one of the things I was going to suggest is if we we're closing a church entirely, just put some vendors on church. But if you're going to use that as a thoroughfare, then you can't do that. Right. Okay, so I think we, 
I think we understand where it is. Yes. So let's maybe you might have to amend that slightly. So um, we didn't pass anything. We didn't pass anything. There was no motion. So this is just us discussing. Okay. So the original statement of Canal and Maine, all the way down to Richland and Maine, that still stands. Okay. All of the uh, 422 uh, entrance closures still stands. Okay. Um, the only exception is Church Road is going to be uh, one direction northbound traffic. Okay. Out. Okay. Uh, that way. We definitely, definitely want to, well, we have the two signs out on 422, those are the ones that have a. And what about Marion Drive? Uh, Marion Drive is going to be. That, that will be closed. Closed. closed at the end of Marion Drive on Main Street would be the best okay. solution. Yeah. Okay. So I have that all written down. Okay. So I think, I think that's what we need in terms of. Yeah. That, and then I'll go through the parking in just a second so that okay. we outline where the parking is. Um, Did you want a motion on this today? Yeah, I mean, let's just get okay. it done. All right. um, so, can, I, can I read it? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You can make a motion. So, uh, the motion proposal is to close Canal and Main to Main down to Michelin, Richland Road, only allowing uh, traffic exiting out. The entrance to 422, the westbound traffic down to the, including the alley. Church Road, one way out, only um, letting northbound traffic remain. Twilight Acres down the alley after the property line of Twilight Acres and Marion Drive to close. Correct. Okay. Second. Yeah, I just have one question, I'm not sure. Uh, during the street sweeping, is Main Street closed from Richland Road? All the way up to how far do they clean? I think they usually do up to the triangle. Usually the, the length of Main Street. They stop in triangle. Yeah, they usually stop in triangle. Yeah. Less than triangle. No, not usually. Um, so so Jim second. he seconded. So roll call. Peter, aye. I read. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Motion carry. Okay. okay. Next thing is we don't really have to motion about it, but it's the okay. uh, we'll motion about it anyway, just to be safe. Yeah. The, uh, oh. the parking. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've got. We'll, we'll do this real quick and then we'll sure. solve. Uh, the parking situation, they uh, they have requested parking at the township building lot, the playgrounds, and they have secured permission from Zion, St. John's, Reed Lutheran Church for parking there, as well as some handicap parking at Twilight Acres Creamery. I'll make a motion to approve the use of the township parking lot and the playground slash ball field. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, Jim seconded. Uh, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Big parking lot at building and, and, uh, and ball field. Okay. Maybe use the township for our horses. Yeah. Yeah, like, no, I don't even think we need to make a motion for that, but yeah, you can you can absolutely use the, the saw horses. We'll make sure that Butcher, one of the road crew guys, gets that squared away for you. I want to see how much we can use just before the lot to that sign place. Yeah. Yeah, I'd prefer to have you guys use our stuff because it's no cost to you rather than having to rent. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, let's, uh, let's call Fred. Call. Okay. And this is about agenda item number two, I'm assuming. I would assume so. Yeah. I think I have them in my phone. See, it's only doing when we move, like move around. Hello. Morning, Fred. It's Jim Brooks. How are you? Uh, doing fine, Jim. I'm here with Irene and Peter, and uh, we have you on speaker for Morning, Fred. Oh, very fine. How are you? So, nice little right. um, you're on speakerphone at the meeting, okay? Just let you know. Hi, Good morning. Uh, well, I'll let you guys lead with the topic and answer whatever questions I have for you. What was what was your concern this morning? We, we are about to discuss the issues uh, pertaining to Stonecroft at this moment. Okay. Uh, let's start with the McCarthy report. Okay. Uh, McCarthy uh, basically uh, 
So I'm sorry. So, so Fred, for, first and foremost, we'll follow up with Jim McCarthy and with Andy, the solicitor, about that to make sure that it is being done according to standards and guidelines. Um, the, the thing that kind of throws me for a loop is the report that we got, there's a, a large number of full sections that are marked as replacement. Uh, like on Sweet Birch Lane alone, there's probably eight 10-foot sections and a 20-foot section that is marked as section replacement. Um, there's a bunch on Rosebush Court that are marked as section replacements rather than repairs, uh, which comes, the total length of curb being replaced is about 495 linear feet. The saw cut and patch was only 12 spots. Well, first of all, there are no repairs that can be made to that stuff. You know, and that's why one of the complaints is that they're, at some place, they're squirting in the tops of the cracks some sort of mastic seal. Well, that provides no structural strength to make the uh, 
the curve being structurally integral. It provides no strength. It's just a it's bubble gum. It does nothing. So wherever they come up with this uh, idea of putting a ceiling on top of a crack, it's pure bullshit. <laughs> so Fred, let me just uh, rewind a little bit. What okay. do you recall the section that you read with regards to the PennDOT recommendations? Yeah, the uh, the the section in particular is on the drawing. There's a drawing RC, I think it's 64M, which I should have included in the packet that I sent to you. That's okay. It's okay. In the middle of the drawing to the left okay. is a picture of the curvy. And on the top of it, of, above that picture in the dimensional set is where it calls out the four foot minimum between constriction or construction breaks or cracks. So any piece of concrete that's less than four feet falls into that, falls below that minimum. And uh, in particular, I can think of a neighbor's piece of drive or curbing where there's a, a saw cut contraction joint. And within a foot of that, there is a break in the concrete, which means that there's a well, it's piece there. Okay. And that has not been marked for replacement. Okay. So we're going to have to contact both McCarthy and Kozlov Stout in regards to this to make sure that the appropriate guidelines are being followed and clarified to us. Again, um, McCarthy is responsible to reporting to us as well as any of his employees. So yeah. you, you can express your concerns, of course, uh, to them, but they're not going to address you. You're, thank you for taking the time out this morning. You've taken the right route and, and discussing it with us, and we're going to address this. Yeah, and that's that's fully what I understand. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, I question them as to where they come up with these guidelines. Yeah. And what I'm saying is, in this case, very specifically, the development plans call out that four foot minimum, and whatever they're throwing in there are, are different guidelines, and I think are not applicable. So we're, we're going to get we're going to get um, clarification on that. Fred, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Fred, hasn't Landmark made it pretty clear that they're willing to do this right, and have actually even questioned McCarthy on Do you really want to go ten feet? You know, there's um, they have expressed that. Um, yeah, expression is cheap. I guess is what yes. I'll, I'll say. Yes. Um, we'll accept that. But um, the other thing that came out associated with the curb is, and I got this second hand, maybe third hand, uh, so put a multiplier on it accordingly, but Landmark came out expecting to inspect the roads that have already been finished because there's curb in that stuff that supposedly has issues. And so, Jim, in, in the, where your house is, that's finished road, but Landmark came out expecting that they would go through that curving and identify any problem areas also. And McCarthy shot him down and saying that was not part of his scope of work. So that then falls to you uh, supervisors to tell McCarthy, you know, the curving in that area hasn't been inspected. It needs to be inspected. You have to check and, the plan. Right. You know, you find something, you find it, you don't, you don't. But is it um, because of the contract, it's completed over the bonds it's, already yeah, released. The bonds been released. Yeah. yeah. So, so the problem with that, if if those roads were completed and the bond was released, then McCarthy has no responsibility with respect to those roads. So, because it's already been completed under the contract. Okay. So, yeah. what you're saying is, like with the street lights, the money was released when, when, yeah. the, when the inspections weren't done. Right. Potentially, yeah. We need we need to validate that, Fred. Willing to, uh, to inspect and, and fix that, um, then I think we need to find some way to take advantage of that. Yeah, if Landmark is willing to do it, we can authorize McCarthy to do it, but we can't unilaterally enforce right. something on Stone or uh, the Stone Group if they're not already willing to do it because of the, the the nature of the bond and the whole plan. Right.
some sort of permit, uh, that their landmark was having a tough time getting the car to talk to them about. So, as I said, that, that piece, I'm not sure if that's true or mm -hmm. not. Um, that, that's the curbing issues. And then I still have a problem with the roadway issue that uh, McCarthy, in the McCarthy report, where he says that um, if we pay over top the cracked uh, asphalt base lid, that he, he acknowledges that those cracks are going to reflect up through the top wearing surface paving and it becomes a maintenance nightmare for us. So I'm trying to understand why he is not advocating uh, clearing all the cracked uh, asphalt off of that uh, roadway. And my take on it is he just wants, uh, he'll have more work as an engineer to replace that stuff in the future. And uh, uh, we I want 20 years, 30 years, we want the, the full 20 year life out of the roads that we received them. And if they don't, replace that cracked asphalt underneath. Um, you know, they're only doing little post stamp size pieces and probably there's at least three times what uh, is showing damage than what they're, they're even talking about replacing. Okay. Um, there's another sort of a, a side thing in that they did a test that they ran a uh, you know, heavy truck over the road surface and saw little or no reflection. And we can accept that. But the problem is that the base course of asphalt has already been structurally damaged by whatever happened to it in the past. So there is no structural strength to the base course of asphalt that they're proposing to put a wearing course on top of. So um, the, the test that was done tested the foundation below the base course and said, yeah, it's not moving anymore. But the base course has already seen the movement that's resulted in the, in the cracks in it. So uh, those cracks will just propagate up through. And I understand from asphalt people, there are two things that could be done. One is you just mill out that base course because it's already cracked and it's lost its structural strength. And there is another fix that they can try putting something between that cracked base course and the, uh, the finished course, the asphalt, the wearing course. Uh, but, uh, that's not as structurally good as replacing the, the crack base course. And if we need to do another walk down, um, and that was the other piece of it was that McCarthy had said we would be notified and involved with the walk down, and they never notified us. So I actually talked to McCarthy about that. Stone notified McCarthy the day before after 5 p.m. We got notice of it the following morning, and you guys got notice at the same time the following morning. So that was, that was, uh, I don't want to lay blame anywhere, but that was a very short notice from the developer on that. Who, who in Stonecroft got notified? Because, uh, it, you know, none of, I didn't, as a board member, get notified until the next day. Uh, and so that was the notification. Okay, so I know when talking to Jim McCarthy, he said that somebody had reached out to the homeowners association from his firm. Well, that's all it was. But, okay. Uh, a, yeah. Okay. Anyhow, um, so we still have right now uh, his report has no documentation or reference information that justifies his position. Is is the position that we have. Okay. We'll follow up on that and, and get some, some information around that. I have the, the road report in front of me, and I see there are a total of 16 spots uh, on Loganberry Court and Sweet Birch Lane that are, are marked for 
uh, milling and repair. So if there's additional ones on that, we can certainly take a look and see what the situation is. Because I know in a lot of other times with municipal road stuff, if you go to do a, a repave, that's not like a, a full depth, you will do a, a crack seal on a little bit of minor alligatoring or, or cracking. Um, but beyond that, you're right. Typically, you would have to do a mill out or a cutout on that. Does Fred have a copy of what you're looking at? Uh, if he doesn't, I can send it to him. Fred. Oh, actually, yeah, this is Fred. Fred has this. Okay. Yeah, Fred has this. He was on this. Yeah. If, if you walk along the roads, uh, I was walking, walking a couple of days ago, and, you know, there was one eight foot pack, uh, eight foot on the side uh, pack uh, area where they marked it to mill out. And right next to it are cracks that are maybe six inches apart, which is getting close to the definition of alligator roads where the, the, the surface has been cracked so much that it has no structural integrity. And, you know, some of those patches that uh, I looked at that one and I said this should have been marked for four times this amount. And, you know, they're. There was also another comment that Mark McCarthy thought that, oh, these roads are going to be taken over by the town in a year or two. And I said, this is bull. The town doesn't want these roads because uh, the town doesn't want to be responsible to try to maintain more roads. Uh, you got your hands full of your present roads. Right. And, that, and that's correct. You know, we have no interest in in having any future work done, we agree with you in that we want our roads to be well maintained for well, as all of the roads, yeah, all the roads, all as, the roads. for as much longevity as we can. I don't think anyone has any intention to slight uh, the residents of Stonecroft and certainly uh, our engineers is quite aware of our financial status and our inability to actually pave the roads that we currently have. So I, I don't think there's any malice in, in that group with respect to wanting to quote unquote, save it so there's more work for them later because there's no guarantee that they're even going to be our engineering firm down the road. Not to mention when they are our engineering firm, they can't do private work right. in the township. That's my right. opinion, which right. has a minimal value. You know, I can't see, yeah. you know, why he's taken this position of, of giving us something less than... Hmm? Oh, yeah, so, so Fred, the other thing to consider is it, while the roads are private, I don't know if you heard me when I said that, a little bit ago. McCarthy Engineering, because of being the township engineer, is not permitted to do private work in the municipality. And you would not be able to call McCarthy Engineering up and have them do uh, engineering for your house or, or okay, that's good. Yeah, so that 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 removes a potential conflict of interest that you're you're kind of uh, portraying there. But yeah. um, if they were to become public roads, then yeah, your your statement would be correct in the sense that it would be one of the uh, authoritative bodies on that. Yeah. So, but uh, we're looking to have roads, and maybe that's the, the base definition we can make in there. It's, it, we're expecting a 25 year life road, which is you know, a new road. Uh, we don't want a road that's had 15 years of life taken out of it by, you know, the fact that it's used as construction road. And I think maybe we need to get that definition put on the table to start with. It says, when these are turned into 25 year roads. Is it in the contract? Yeah, we got to yeah, check if that's in the contract. Yeah. Jim, one Jim, one of the things that might be beneficial here is if we can get something between like the, the homeowners association, yourself, Jim McCarthy, maybe somebody from Stone to do another walkthrough. And because we missed missed the opportunity the first time to actually do that. It might be beneficial to have somebody from the board, somebody from engineering, somebody from Stonecroft and somebody from Stone all there and looking at the stuff at the same time. Jim is Jim Jim is nodding his head for it. So, you know. Yes, I agree. So let's work on getting that uh, set up in the next maybe one to two weeks depending on how everybody's schedule falls, mm -hmm. the sooner the better, obviously, because I know they're looking to, to do a lot of the work. Where's, didn't they already start doing some of the curbs, Fred? Yes, they have. They're probably, uh, so we want to I'd move. say they're at least 20, 25, 30% of the curbs on, on the, the piece that uh, has so far been identified. We think that's 
been identified four singers and maybe 50 percent of what we've identified as having cracks and breaks okay yeah, so, i've got i've got some availability this week and next week depending on the time of day okay. so um fred do you have my number i do not okay i'll read. i'll make sure jim gets that to you okay that's great okay We'll, uh, we'll follow up on that, and you'll be hearing from one of us, whether it's Irene or Jim or myself or Sue, uh, for some scheduling on that. Yeah, that would be great. I should be available all the time. We should even have a few more people back in the area. Um, Jim Donaghini's out of town this week, uh, and I guess my only uh, limitation is next weekend. I've also got a commitment, but uh, other than that, I'll be available. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Fred. Thank you, Fred. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, no, no, no. Enjoy, appreciate enjoy your, your, call. Enjoy your you. mini vacation yeah. work. Day. <laughs> yeah. All right. Take care. Yep. Goodbye. Yes, so, bye bye. <clears throat> I too have heard to a third party that Sean told somebody that. What's well, the big deal? The township's going to take these roads in a few years. We're never taking those roads. Right. Yeah. So there's a little so bit if, of So if he's under wrong. the impression that that's going to happen, he's under the yeah. wrong impression. Yeah. But I guess, I guess on Sean's behalf, Sean's been a very good advocate for the township. Yeah. You know, everyone is, is trying to do the best that they can. And I, I, again, I think, unfortunately, I think it's just Jim's demeanor that people take him wrong. But they're, they're always like on the side of let's save money, let's. Yeah. Not, not save money by cutting corners, but yeah. saving money. Like, let's do this let's, fiscally responsibly. Right, and let's do this right. They want to do it right mm. the first time. They're not out to get people. I, I'm sorry. I apologize to Fred. I just hate when people color it that way. I really do. Yeah. Jim was a certified engineer, and his reputation is on the line. And that's a lot of word of mouth if yeah. people are dissatisfied with his uh, work. Yep. Have a good one, Don. See you, Don. Um, so yeah, we just need to talk about that. I don't want to see them file a complaint yeah. against McCarthy either because right. that's, that's detrimental to his business. Yeah. Right, right. But I'm afraid if this is not done properly, right, that's where this is headed. Well, I mean, all, right. that that yeah. being withstanding, I'm afraid of having uh, having this done wrong and then having chronic problems for right. the residents of Stonecroft. Right. We don't want to. I said this before. We don't want to do something for one of their roads that we wouldn't allow one right. one of ours. And so we need to know what the pen dot standards Co are. Correct. Correct. Especially we need to hold them. If Landmark is willing, has a willingness to do this right. Why don't you tell them, oh no, don't don't worry about that. But well, that, with that said though, with, with that if said, it's part of the contract. if it's part of the contract, there's only so much right. that we can enforce. But if Landmark is willing to go beyond that, there's nothing stopping them. Right. Well, yeah, that's what right. that's what I'm, I'm thinking is why would if, if I said to you, right. hey Peter, instead of me just replacing that piece, I'm gonna replace the whole thing. Right. You would say, right. but you have, well, you're under no obligation to right. do that. But yeah, if you want to do that, that would be wonderful. Right. Yeah. But, you have but the engineer have... said, oh, no, well, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somebody think... told them, no, it's not necessary. Yeah. Well, who cares so, if it's necessary or not if I'm willing so, to So, Irene, from a yeah. contract standpoint, that's us enforcing against Stone. If right. Stone says, you know, we know these things are the things that are wrong, but, you know, we see there's some questionable things elsewhere. We want to replace those, too. Right. I mean, other than maybe having to put a permit in, that's they're they're not going to get any opposition from us. They're not going right, to get any opposition right. from the homeowners. Well, right. I think the answer should be well, yes. Thank please, you very thank much. you. Yeah, isn't right. that isn't that uh, nice? Right. Of you? Right. Yeah. So, so you just hope that they're savvy enough to put things in writing. Yeah. Because what can happen is if they perform the services and they say, "Oh, this wasn't part of the contract, but services now perform." Now yeah. you do have a court battle. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. And, yeah, and that that would be so. You know. Written word is 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 what we need for any contract of the services performed. Well, yeah. with, with that said, there's yeah. no consideration in past consideration. Right. Right. So if they did it right. unilaterally and there was nothing in writing and then tried to right. bill for it, they can't really do that either. But I think it would be beneficial from the PennDOT standpoint for us to understand and from the plan standpoint, the contract standpoint, what leverage we have in terms of enforcement. But then the meeting between you and the homeowners and McCarthy and, and Stone would be beneficial in the sense that you might be able to broker something that we can't necessarily enforce. But if Stone says, hey, we're willing to do this, and the homeowners say, yeah, that's fantastic, just kind of gently nudge them over to talk amongst yourselves. Yeah, we, we, We're out of this conversation. Right. But let me just say that that's really nice, nice. for you to do. Right. Yeah. Right. Boy, we're going to make you look good on Yelp next time. Right. Exactly. Are you going to reach out to Jim for all this clarification? 
Yeah, I might have to hit up your, your sure, notes, sure. but I'm yeah, I can, I can send them an email. What I'm going to do is type all this stuff up, send it to Sue, and send it to you guys okay. as the meeting minutes, and let Sue um, uh, comb through it afterwards and see if she wants to debulk it or something. Try okay. to be as to the point as I can. Okay, but yeah, we'll follow up with that. I'll send, okay. I'll, once I have the notes, I'll send a, an email out okay. to McCarthy, and then part, part of that will be the summary of we want to cite the PennDOT yeah. regulations. We want to cite in the, the plans and if anything in the contract potential. I'll put Andy on it too. Yeah. Um, of the, the actual requirements for the curb repair and for the street repair. Okay. Uh, and then set a, setting up a meeting as soon as possible between yeah. all the parties. Okay. Next item on the agenda is to amend the budget. This is to add the engineering services or code of accounts 408 to the chart of accounts. Um, I'll make a motion to add the engineering services 408 to the chart of accounts. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Me, aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Okay, next is the Main Street traffic study. Uh, this was performed for stop signs at Church in Maine, Water in Maine, and Sharp in Maine. Uh, we received a report and the engineer and the attorney are still reviewing it. There, there was some, some questions that they had around that. So hopefully we'll have some, some update on that on Thursday night, but uh, based on a little sidebar that I had with Andy, he, he said that they want to look at it and, and make sure that there's not anything that can be done. Can we put in a, a pedestrian crosswalk if that's the case? You can put in, we can put a crosswalk so, in right so now. In regards, we could have slow pedestrian crossing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I actually, the line painting that was supposed to be done last year had crosswalks at every single one of those intersections. Okay. So by, uh, by, I forget if it's a statute or not, but um, the, <clears throat> the allowance is we can put crosswalks in at any intersection without having to have an ordinance. It's, okay. it's something, it's like the not parking within like 15 feet uh, of the, the corner thing that's just there all the time you don't have to put any extra stuff into enforce it and we would just be able to get signage to say mm -hmm. yeah, yeah the only i think yeah. with that it's a non-enforceable sign it's a caution right. sign so i don't think you need an ordinance for it but we would, yeah, still do it. We would probably yeah. still do it just right. to be safe to modify people's behavior because i think more people are cognizant of oh there's going to be someone crossing mm -hmm. yeah what do you hope i know there's pen dots but cameras on turnpike yeah and we're actually you can get a letter in the mail saying you exceeded the speed limit by whatever. Here's your fine. Yeah. We won't give you any points. Well, the reason for no points is because you're not being contacted. Yeah. You're not having the state cop pull you over. What if there's any chance we can do something like that? We can't. Uh, and unless the law has changed from the last time that I looked at it, it's the same reason that the state troopers can use radar, but locals can't. There are certain things that are allowed on certain types of roadways, like the turnpike, that are not allowed on, on local roads, like the, the red light camera enforcement scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay. So more to come on that. Uh, the culvert on Reichert Road. We did receive several quotes for the box culvert. Uh, unfortunately, none of them participate with CoStars, so we will need to put this out for bid. Uh, so I will make a motion to put the uh, box culvert for the culvert on Reichert Road out to bid. Second. Okay, roll call. Peter. Myself, I, Irene. I. Jim. I. Motion carried. I'll uh, email, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll email uh, Jim McCarthy about putting that out on pen bid right away. Okay, next is the overall road projects for 2022, including culverts. Uh, I'm making a list of the culverts that need to be replaced, the uh, roads that we want to potentially oil and chip, crack seal, and cold patch. Um, we are still waiting for the permits on the Marion Drive North and the school road by Oscar Manbeck, uh, as well as the culvert on Sheridan, uh, Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover. The culvert on Marion Drive at Jake Weiss was submitted to the DGLVR grant program. I spoke to Jim McCarthy, uh, BCCD wants to fund 50% of this, uh, which would be a, a total cost for us of about 90,000 for the project. It is a slight increase over having our road crew do it, but it would be a lot more direct to have the outside company just do it. So um, I'm, I'm of the mind to accept the, the generous grant contribution from BCCD and to move forward with that project. So I'll, I'll make a motion to accept BCD's funding offer for the culprit uh, on Marion Drive for the DG LVR program. Second. Okay. Roll call. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Motion carried. <clears throat> so, 
on 50% of the Marion Drive uh, culvert. Okay. Um, just, a, I guess, a little bit of an aside to the roads. We need to all take a trip around town mm -hmm. and, and drive. Uh, Sue and I were just um, looking around. If you both have the opportunity, I want to say we typed in Pennsylvania Department of Transportation Rural Roads. Mm -hmm. There are grants. Oh, okay. Um, Good. There are grants. There's also funding. I think it's time that we took a look at some of the seriously bad roads. If we need to apply for funding, more ideally for grants. Okay. Because I, I think everyone in town has had enough. I hate going down Sheridan. It's like getting a, a, a back massage that I yeah. didn't want. Yep. Um, and as far as I know, you had a concern with the thinning of the trees. Uh, the trees, a thinning of the trees is an option yeah. to allow more light. And that's something that could be coordinated and done. In fact, I want to say there was something on the PSATS uh, website um, about how to, uh, there was a, a program about how to get that done. So I just took it very briefly. Okay. So yeah, my concern with yeah. Sheridan, because I know it's bad, but yeah. with the, the tree cover and the right. slope of the road, the way it is, right. is it's it, it, yeah, it's, it's wrong. It's, and so we know that's a full depth reclamation. Mm -hmm. So we would want someone to come out and it has to be removed right. and regraded. It, it has to be done. So it's, 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 it's not a very long strip, but it's a very intensive strip. Mm -hmm. And so we know that there's going to have to be work that needs to be done, but we need to start looking at these grants. So, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. If you have ones that you found, let's, let's, yeah. the three of us look I'm at sure them. You're getting the same complaints I get, but people are a little frustrated. With all oh, I, I, right. I get it. I get it. I, I really do. A group one day. We were talking about beautifying the neighborhood by putting flowers on this. And I said, it'd be nice if we do something down through Main Street. And a group of 25 women said, fix the roads first. Right, right, right. There's, and I said, yeah, oh, okay, yep. right. we'll take it. Yep. Right. There's, there's a lot that needs yeah. to get done. Money is always is the sticking point. But if we, again, we have the, we kind of know what's always going to come into a certain extent. Yeah. And I hate to say it, we have to rely on taxes rather than liquid fuels because we did see a drop in liquid fuels. Um, and because of how things are going to change in the future, um, we, liquid fuels funding may be altered because if there's not liquid fuels that are powering our vehicles, then the state and federal government, obviously, of course, we'll probably figure out a different way to manipulate that. So we get some money, whether it's based on green energy, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, because they know that that's the, 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 especially in this state, that that's the blood and guts of how we fund our roads. So um, I, I think down the road, we have to really figure out how we're going to repair these roads, how we're going to fund it and how, I hate to say it, if we have to have that as part of our annual budget, this is the money that's paid for this loan that goes mm -hmm. to those roads. We have to do it. Yeah, it's it, so much has been neglected for so long, and we have been handed this, this just monumental, awful, yeah. awful, awful type of a, a job here. It's just it's very frustrating when I see the amount of of stuff that has just been left to to wither away and die, and yeah. you know everyone has this expectation. And it's like you don't understand. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I, I completely yeah. understand it. I agree. Yeah. I'm, if I could fix all the roads, and I think I've said this at several meetings before, if I could fix all the roads, right. we, just, would. Uh, we would. We absolutely yeah. would. But like just the, the four culverts that we have that are affecting one of the roads that's is down budget. to one lane. Yeah. One of the one of them is just completely outright closed. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much the entirety of that fund is yeah. to take care of those. Yeah. Road work is extremely expensive. Right. Right. Um, so it's looking for grants, it's looking for this money. Um, I have that website saved on the computer. So I'll ask you guys to take a look at it, take a look at when you're home. Mm -hmm. We all put our minds together and we need to start working on this. And I'll, I'll get to that other point as we get further on with some of the agenda items too. Okay. Yeah. So next is the Berks County Cooperative Purchasing Council line painting. Uh, we have received the price sheet and the request form for this year. So I will make sure that we have everything that they skipped out on last year on the list. Uh, and then be looking at doing probably about uh, a quarter of the township, depending on what that the price looks like. If it's within the budget, I'll, I'll push it up to a half. But uh, we want to start getting into the habit of just routinely yep. repainting lines uh, every couple of years or so. 
Okay, next item on the agenda is the hiring of office staff. Uh, we're looking for a part-time assistant secretary. We would need to create the position, set the wage, the number of hours, write the job description, and then advertise it. At last month's meeting, a motion was made to move the treasurer's desk into the AA room and move the filing cabinets into the office. We'll have to work on that in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, um, that's, that's not so much of a problem. And I guess that's part of the point that I was saying earlier. If we have that, that second person, that's the assistant secretary, so <laughs> she will delegate what tasks she wants done. Mm -hmm. That person can also be our, our point person on saying, we need this looked into. Can you please find out as much information as you possibly yep. can? We need you to make these phone calls. And that person will be invaluable. Sue and I haven't come together uh, this week because of circumstances as far as uh, uh, putting together our uh, job role. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to throw it out there. My older son is uh, in college. If we can't hire someone outright as far as the interview process, he's willing to take on the job for the summer as a, as a and basically he's, he's actually looking for an internship mm -hmm. because his uh, degree is uh, governmental studies also. So I'm just gonna throw it out there. He would be a candidate unless and until we would hire someone, mm -hmm. you know, for yep. that part-time position for routine. So I'm just throwing it out there, not trying to- Yeah, to no, I mean- him. Yeah, and if Sue doesn't like him, I said, I said, Sue, you fire him. You know, you <laughs> tell me how tall he's fired. But, uh, okay. but until and unless we could find someone and we have an actual <laughs> job description, we need to set pay rate. Mm -hmm. And so that's another sticking point too. So, so my, my suggestion on pay rate, cause yeah. Sue's at um, 22. 22, thank you. Um, would be 17 an hour for the part-time oh person. God, that's a lot. Um, well, I mean, you figure yeah. you can go and work at a McDonald's now for like 15. Yeah, that's true. So uh, probably 16 to 20 hours a week. We have to decide on, on that. Uh, the job description, uh, Andy said he was going to send one over yeah. from Wolverstorf. I've not seen that yet, but rather than us try to write a full job description, let's see what we can reuse. And then advertising would be once we have yeah. all that determined, we can actually advertise. And I'm just going to use my um, younger son as free labor to move things. Free labor, <laughs> free labor is the best kind of labor. Move things and helps you get organized. Because once we get the desk and... Um, the file cabinet, a file cabinet from the, the, the file room over into there. And we get me up and running in there. That allows Sue to utilize that space a lot better. Again, she just needs the assistance with getting someone to help her to file because it's just become so monumental. Mm -hmm. There's so much information that comes in. I was down here myself this week. I think I put 10 hours in just doing some of the stuff that I have. And I'm like, there's this short pile. I'm like, oh, I need Sue's help. Yeah. So, so there's quite a bit of, um, yeah, we need stuff to do. We have too much work and not enough yeah. hands to do it. So yeah. yeah we, so we we're going to hold on any motion in regarding this. Yep. Okay. So yep. that's already, um, number nine office equipment. Yes. Okay. If I could take the lead yep, on this absolutely. one. So going back to, if I'm moving, I, I, uh, need another, obviously she's going to need a computer in there <coughs> for whoever's going to be assisting her. Mm -hmm. And I would need the computer. I love the two screens. I can't, yeah. I can't function without the so two screens. I've actually, I've, I did yeah. a little, little looking. What I would suggest is we take this computer, which yeah. is a twin for one of the office ones. Okay. That becomes your computer. Okay. I'll make one okay. that goes in the rack on the okay. other side of the wall, because I did get the rack hung. Okay. And then that is just the computer for these screens okay. and, and everything else. Okay. Um, in terms of monitors, I found, I actually have one almost identical oh, to this perfect. at home. It's a good screen yeah. and it's right now it's 50% off because it's old stock. Wow. So it's $125 wow. instead of 230. Wow. So I would suggest that we snap two of those up. Okay. Um, printer. Printer. Uh, that's, that's a little more complicated. So yeah. are you looking to do black and white only color? Do you need to scan from it? From my, my perspective, I just need to be able to do the checks mm. and print out the deposit slips. Okay. Um, uh, the nice thing about what we have now is we have two trays that fit that. So just one tray comes out, another tray goes in. So that's such an old piece of equipment. Is that a, an available thing on newer printers? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah you should be so, able to so, do. So, so to I'd have to look. To get an extra, an extra, um, tray. So, and then you would take care of any of the software. Mm -hmm. So the QuickBooks program, all that other stuff would yeah. be. I, I was thinking about, we don't need QuickBooks online. I don't need it to be a mobile thing. So having something with the two trays, one that I could use for the checks and stuff, um, because then 
Then the other thing I was thinking about for, for tasks like just having the ordinances scanned in and just stuff that needs to be kind of routinely scanned in. So again, that you're not necessarily bothering Sue. Mm. I don't think we need another scanner at this point. Okay. There's, there's, there's a few things that I need scanned in kind of here and there. But again, if there's another person that's, that's working with Sue and, and I say, can you please scan in these documents for me? If they're, if it's not a, a a feature on the printer. I, yeah. I, I truly need a printer. As far as copying materials, I jam, thank you. That copier is perfect. So that it's 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 wonderful. Sorry to be too picky there. So yeah, I'll I'll look around yeah. and find uh it, it's based on the fact that you're going to be printing out monochromes, like yeah. black and white. Yeah. Uh, a laser jet is going to be the better better fit for that. Whatever it is with um, respect to ink and all well, that stuff. the nice thing is the laser jet yeah. is a drum just like the the other one okay. and you're I, I know people that have had printers like this that they have not had to replace a drum for like 10 years okay so in, in terms of just efficient printing on small scale that's that's okay. your best bet okay we um, i'm 100 relying on your expertise when it comes to these items because even home usage i am quite minimal here it, it's heavy so i need to need yeah. your expertise I'll, on these i'll find okay. i'll find a good one this one was one that is just it's a plain old just color printer. If we needed okay. something cheap, it's like ninety three dollars, and it's okay. a scanner and a printer. But you're okay. gonna you're gonna spend more on the ink than yeah, you are. No, I just need black and white. So with respect to the screens, yeah. so that is um, is it the scepter curve screen? Yep. The tw two would be two twenty four inch screens. Oh. And so the purchase price is uh, the one hundred and twenty four ninety eight plus tax shipping obviously let me i'll just throw it in the cart see what it actually comes down to so we don't need another tower and keyboard no okay. we would need something to replace the one in here but we can use this one and i'll i'll price out what we would have to do for like i said i, I just get a, a rack mounted case and it would okay. just live in the, the rack with the other network equipment. Okay. So. Okay. And then I'll go on to item number 10 too. Okay. So it looks like it's so, a total of $264.96. Jim, do you feel comfortable mm -hmm. us having ordered the, yep. the screen? Okay. Yeah, make, make the motion. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to authorize Peter to purchase the scepter curve screens, two 24 inch screens from Amazon for a price of $264.96. Total. Total. Second. Did you second that? I, I seconded it. Yeah. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Me. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Okay. Order placed. So that brings me to item number 10. And this is something, Jim, do you go through the PSATS website at all? Okay, so I try to, at least once a week, because I, I try to go through the PSATS website, I'm always clicking on the items that, that Sue us, forwards to us from the discussion board, things like that. And I've looked occasionally at some of the, the LTAP programs, uh, the local technical assistant program for those of you watching this video down the road, no pun intended. So um, <laughs> what, again, something that, that I think mine has just been overlooked. Uh, we need to continue moving forward. We need to educate ourselves about programs that are available that will help us as a township, that will help uh, the citizens of this community. And part of that is this LTAP program. And a lot of that has to do with maintenance of the roads and, and how to properly do things. Now, I, I, I've gotten some verbal flack from a couple of the guys like, oh, I know how to do that. That's great. We all know how to do the things that we do. But continuing education never hurts anyone. Well, there's always a better way to do right, things. Right, right. So, and because there's new materials, there's new new equipment. There's there's always something new to learn, and there might be something like, oh, I didn't know that. Like we did all the dirt mm -hmm. low gravel road volume course, and that was like, I hate to say it, it was interesting. Like mm -hmm. I thought I was going to be bored out of my mind, but it was pretty good. So my proposal is is can we have the road crew guys do five of these classes the whole year, not make it a requirement requirement but ask them to have it as a policy we can obviously have them come in here and sit and watch it on the screen mm -hmm. and and it it's they'll get paid for their time we're not asking them to go out of their way to do this we're asking them to 
participate in continuing education and make it part of our policy for road crew people that are consistently our part-time employees. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Yeah. What's um the we have the draft handbook up there. Why don't we put a continuing education yeah. like we'll say requirement? Yeah. Um, maybe soften the wording on that a little bit, but put that in the handbook that part of being a road crew member is staying current on best practice and industry standard. Yeah. I know a lot of the guys um don't like to use the computer, but they can come have, in here and have here. set up. And Even. I think what we can do is we can, because the, the classes are posted on the PSATS website, we just take a piece of paper, say, these are the classes that are, are going on this month. We'd like you to, you know, please sign up for one of these. So I would recommend to do five or six throughout the year. Okay. Um, not make it any more of a difficult requirement than that, but just so, so everyone, I wish which, which was in the room because I'm sure he's going to yell at me. <laughs> um, but just, just to make it, you know, like, you don't you learn so much stuff mm. and just to make it so that we're up to date with standard industry standard basically yeah and it may yeah. even be just little stuff it's stuff you already know but it might be a component of it that right. you're like oh, i never really thought about that or oh, right. i guess that is a better way of doing that so no i'm, I'm all for it I mean, okay. you can just uh, i don't want to necessarily volunteer people for a saturday right. but right. it might be easiest to just have them come in like one saturday every other month and have a group of people sit and yeah. view the thing on the big screens right so at this point, let's, I guess, I don't need to, we no, don't we need don't to even, make a motion, make motion, motion that. needed, but just something that we're going to, to um, move forward, investigate. I'm going to take a look to see what classes are available. We could post it here, say, guys, please sign up for one of these classes. You know, we'll make it convenient for you to watch it. You get paid for your time, whether, because there's some days like it's raining, it's pouring out, mm -hmm. you know, and there's some people are mm -hmm. looking for things to do, but our guys that are, are usually here and, and doing work, it's like, please just, and this way there's no arguments when, when someone's out going and doing a job, they're like, well, this is, no, oh, this is the way, we, no, this is what the industry standard is. Yes. So. That's what I'm yeah, saying. We right. just have people right. sit in here and do like a easier. seminar. Right, right. And, 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 yeah. and Sue That'd or myself nice. or whoever's here at the building can say, hey, you know, playing this video for you, this is what we want. I don't think they're terribly long programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's not like the dirt yeah. and gravel thing that right. was like a two day long. Right. I think it's like maybe an hour or two. Yeah. Maybe. So yeah. bring your lunch, bring something to eat, you yeah, know, drink, yeah. whatever. Probably buy coffee and donuts or something. Right, right. But, I'm willing to do that. Yeah. Definitely. So if we can jump back to number nine for just a sure, second. Sure. One of the other things that we had on the list that we didn't talk about was uh, wireless keyboard and mouse because we don't have enough of the physical oh, yeah. things. Um, these are on wires right now, but ideally we'd want to have uh, two more wireless keyboard and mice one for the, the the meeting room computer and the other one for the the aa room computer um there's a decent logitech okay. computer or not computer excuse me um keyboard it's like 27 dollars. i actually think i closed that out um yeah it's a logitech mk270 they're 28 dollars each plus tax okay so if you want i'll pick them up we happen to use some of that almost that exact same model at okay. work and they work fine um okay. so i'll make a motion to uh authorize the purchase of two logitech mk70s for 28 dollars each plus tax second roll call aye aye irene uh aye jim aye okay motion carried okay, okay. Uh, anything else on the, the LTAP stuff irene no, that was it really it's just again just trying to there's such a volume of information that that we all have to kind of keep up on like i rely on you for technology and most stuff i rely on you for input about insurance and the stonecroft stuff and the mtca stuff you guys rely on me for the financial information mm -hmm. and, any, yeah. right, yeah. and, and all the audit <laughs> stuff and some of the, and the, the daily workings of, of the office stuff that comes through <coughs> and i think that's what makes us work all well together you know like sue and i always comment like we've got everything covered right, we do we're all different generations here and it just blows my mind we all come from different backgrounds how well we work together because we're just trying to make this place better, but there's so much information and the caffeine just kicked in. Peter, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Peter and I just yeah. recognize the women are smarter than us. So uh, no, do, no, no. do almost that's, no. that's the hallmark of a smart man. I, I, yeah. I, I do feel overwhelmed. There's just <laughs> there's just so much work to do. I have to retrieve the mail. Don't want to forget that. Okay, I'll try to remind you. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we have two more items on the agenda. The first sure. one is Act 537. Uh, the SEO has started doing inspections in the Northwest District. 
Uh, Tim Wagner's response, just to reiterate, has basically uh, indicated that everybody has to have a septic inspection. There are no exceptions. No one can be excluded. Uh, the next step is the income study. Uh, I've been basically playing email tag with Colleen Terry from Econ Partners back and forth. She's going to get me connected up with a specialist, somebody who specializes in this particular type of thing that we need, named Joe Baldez. Uh, Joe Baldez, uh, B A L uh, B O L, excuse me, D A Z. I'm hoping to get connected with him this upcoming week. And he would be the one that we would be working with on the income study and the analysis of financial viability for the results of the income study. So hopefully some more news on that, maybe in advance of Thursday night, but uh, it is kind of quietly churning in the background. Last item on the agenda, also sort of related to the Act 537, is the holding tank ordinance and agreements. Um, I don't know if I missed it, but I didn't I didn't see that come through on the email and I didn't see it on the Google Drive. Did you guys get those? Uh, I think so. Yes, they were older emails okay. from um, Alan. And so I'm going to say maybe it was... I'll, I'll look yeah. up emails from Alan. Yeah. If, if you think it came from yeah. Alan, I'll look back yeah. on Alan. But when I was briefing myself on the agenda, I was like, man, I don't remember actually... I remember seeing things of us talking about it, but I don't actually ever remember seeing the, well, the, the whole thing. Yeah. So, I mean, if we find it, let's just put it up on the Google Drive in the SEO folder and then and then look at it. Whether it's me or you or Sue or whoever, let's let's get that out there. Other than that, that's the last item on the agenda. Um, I don't have any comments. Irene, do you have any comments? I have lots of comments. <laughs> uh, um, no. Oh, here, I have it. Oh, cool. forward yeah, it just to forward it to me, Jim. Right, just span, bring, bring so. it right up to the top of the mailbox, please. So attachments let me just do that okay um i guess for right now no it's just just housekeeping stuff i need you guys for okay um other than that um again it's it's, it's just stressing the the need for another person in this office and you know okay jim do you have any comments uh no i'm good okay i'll make a motion to adjourn Time is now 10, 10 a.m. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, motion carried. Thank you, everyone. Thank have you. a good rest of the weekend. See you Thursday. Have we, uh, have we